previously on The Nighttime Show. Nighttime Show! The Nighttime Show! Nighttime Show! Whoa! Live from Hollywood, it's The Nighttime Show! I'm Mike Black, voice of The Nighttime Show. With us as always, our head writer, the Matt with the Mouth, Matt Walker. And today we have a pair of very special guests. Writers for Young Hercules, DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, X-Men, and the upcoming X-Men, the art and making of the animated series book, Julia Leewald and Eric Leewald! And now, our host with the most, he's the best there is at what he does, and what he does is polish off donuts, put your hands together at home, for Stephen Kramer Glickman! Yes, you better believe it! Wonderful job, Mike Black. Wonderful intro. Thank you. That was a, 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 a very special intro. It really was. My runner-up was uh, hosting a podcast for a world that hates and fears him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I like that, too. That could have worked. Yeah, but worked. I didn't do it. Yeah. Well, you know, hosting I, a podcast with co-hosts who hate and fear him. <laughs> yes, there we yes. go. <laughs> Both are good. Both are good. Um, today, uh, we're, very, we're very, very excited. Having uh, Julia and Eric Leewald on the show today, uh, the creators of one of the coolest shows uh, like we've uh, we, we we grew up watching and then have rediscovered on Disney plus uh, I mean it's it's just such an absolute honor to uh, to have you guys on the on the show today I mean really 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 incredible um, so, you know the uh, the animated series the x-men animated series was such a Badass, incredible piece of work. Um, it really I, was, and, and you guys, you guys made this show happen, and it's phenomenal. It's just extraordinary. I will take as much credit as you're willing to give me, <laughs> but do want to qualify that I was a writer on the show, yep. but I got to be a fly on the wall for the whole series run because Eric was considered what we call the showrunner for the whole series Didn't run. call it back then. They had some sort of smaller credit that <laughs> paid less, but it, <laughs> yeah. it was the same job. It, same amount of work. Every right. episode, yeah. his name is on every episode, developed for TV by Eric Lewald. Yeah. Not one extra penny. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, no, no. That's Someone's getting residuals somewhere, but it's, it's well, not the not people that wrote animation, it. You get no. to order first when they have sandwiches. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the big perk. <laughs> Absolutely. They didn't offer sandwiches. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, we have a high Spawn story about that. Oh, my God. Speaking we, of. We almost never had meetings. I mean, he, he put money into it, and he was involved in the production of it, and to his credit, and he wanted it to be made for five cents and <laughs> would have done, like, uh, a Scooby-Doo version of it if he and could And we have can get into, into that it. later, but yeah. Oh, yeah. But one time we were up at his offices uh, with – half a dozen writers and we almost never had a writers meeting but for some reason it's the beginning of a, of a new you know the third season or whatever and he walks in and he looks and we're having lunch and we've got you know, deli wrapper stuff all over he says who paid for the sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> and that's what well, i did hi him i i knew you would not Oh, okay. Continue with the meeting. <laughs> oh my God, he's he is kind wow. of a, a big legend in the oh, in, yeah. in the yes. history of you know television and making things for very very cheap. Like <laughs> he uh, he's the guy who did uh, Power, Power Rangers. Rangers. Yes, right? Absolutely. Is. Yes, he is. Uh, he, uh, he's after after X Men. Yeah. After X Men made Fox a huge place, he talked Margaret Lesh, same lady that. Got X Men on the air. The president of Fox Kids. He yeah, he tried with everyone else on the planet, and no one would go near these Power Ranger thing. <laughs> Finally, he, but he said, "Margaret, you've got this huge cut with X Men. Trust me." So she was able to take it to her bosses, who looked at Power Rangers. What the hell is this? And she said, "Just let's trust for one season, see if we can make some money off of it." So, yeah. God, between him and those Hammer Films guys, yeah, God, yeah. The, uh, I, I I love that. Uh, you know that story of. Um, uh, the, uh, the 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 this the, is the Hammer House of Horror. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah Jean Claude Van Damme in the in the um, lobby doing uh-huh. karate kicks in the air for everybody <laughs> to show off. Like he just like showed up. He wasn't yeah. invited. He just showed up in the lobby of uh, Saban's uh-huh. uh, office <laughs> and and Hammer Films' office, and he stood around the lobby waiting for one of the presidents to be in the lobby. And then when they walked in, he would do uh, karate kicks and jumps and stuff just 
out of no, just out of nowhere yeah. and like would be like watch me now and then he would like jump around <laughs> and do like cartwheels and and a couple, I hope know, that's exactly how he introduced it. Basically, <laughs> watch me now. He wasn't invited, <laughs> and that's how he got his first job. Is they were like, someone put this weirdo in a movie. He's doing karate in the lobby. So you he know? was like Borat before Borat in a way. Like, <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. The, you, wow. Who is uh, when it comes to the people that you guys have worked for mm-hmm. over the years? Um, who's some of the people that you've you know had to? What are some of the personalities you've, oh, you've had to deal with? I I'm a little older than she is. I started in the mid 80s in the in the business and my first job was for Hanna Barbera and so working for Joe Hanna and and uh, my god my Bill <sighs> Barbera Joe Barbera and Bill Hanna my, yep. my, my mind's juggled 30 <laughs> some years later uh, and they were completely they were these larger than life people and complete opposites um, <laughs> Joe Barbera was Italian and he'd take 20 people out to the nicest uh, Italian restaurant he could and he'd lower he'd load it every, over everybody and was a showman and he'd go and he'd pitch everything to the networks and they'd fall in love with him and, you know whatever odd little show he'd pitch they'd buy it yeah. and then it would get handed to Bill Hanna and he'd make it for a bu- for a dollar <laughs> oh he was my. like the midwestern guy he took us out the staff out to lunch a couple times but it was to like the assistance league for, <laughs> for iced tea and a three dollar and forty cent lunch right, yeah. was where bill took us but yeah no joe was uh joe was all flamboyance in hollywood and bill was all nuts and bolts and what are some of the shows you worked on back then oh i got started my first my first job opportunity out here after coming here from uh Tennessee to hope to make it in the movie business was Challenge of the Gobots, oh, oh, <laughs> which wow. was a mid '80s yeah. uh, competitor to Transformers. Oh, yeah. I watched it. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I ended up writing six of those. It was my first. It was foot in the door. Uh, a guy, a neighbor, just said, "Look, they just got a big order for stuff. Uh, I'm writing at Hanna Barbera. They they're willing to look at new people, even if you don't have a credit. So, do you have anything I can show my boss?" And he did. He showed it boss he said uh, yeah you can write okay we'll give him a chance and so a buddy of mine and I went in and pretended to be a writing team and we got an we, we got an assignment and wrote it and then said can we get some more and he said well but we're not really a writing team and they said well we can't give you two assignments one of you could really suck <laughs> and so I just said well look if if he's the one that sucks I'll write a, the, I'll, I'll redo his for free so you just give us two anyway mm-hmm. and that got the foot in the door wow, and, you know nice. 700 scripts later wow. oh my god that's amazing well so uh, let me Julia, i'm just like so when you how when you hold wait, on, i gotta wait, ask a question on, what, on, what, wait, what, wait, what, what, i gotta ask about the go bus for a minute when okay. you write a script right, like that ask about go yeah. do you leave write one it, do you write it in the script like how many moves they have to take to change from like a car into a robot? Is it like is that part of the script or are you just like I, they I, change into a car and then they just do it? Yeah, I think we we just say we change into a car, but obviously the art department has a standard. Okay, we're cutting yeah. to the same uh, old the same, same old reel of it. Yeah, okay. footage again <laughs> yeah. to redo it. As a child, I did not notice that there was stock footage. For but those. but we got new cars sent to us during the season, so suddenly you know put in this new Porsche or put uh-huh. in you know whatever <laughs> yeah. and come up with some name for it. You know. Hans von something, yeah. and so I don't remember. It's been too long, but I really hope there was a character called Hans von Porsche that, <laughs> that, that popular culture just hasn't but, embraced yet. It's just but, but, waiting for the right moment. But, you know? but we did have to integrate new toys on the fly. It yeah, because because I mean that whole show was designed to sell the toys. Of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think Hans von Porsche is wearing the boots that can do it. If anyone in GoBots is going to take down Optimus Prime, He's gonna it's Hans it. von Porsche. You better believe yes. it. Uh, Julia, what about you? How did yeah. you get started? Because do you know what your first IMDb credit says? Oh, dear God. Do you know which one it is? My very... Uh, uh, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. It is! Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers! Uh, yeah, which like one that. was it? Oh, uh, oh uh, uh, Kiwi's Big Adventure. Very, <laughs> very nice. That was wow. The, that was the first thing I ever wrote that I got paid for in Los title. Angeles. And it, how, Oh, how my was, goodness. How did you end up with that gig? How did well, that happen? Well, so... Um, the fact that Eric and I are here talking to all of you and you're listening to us, thank you. Uh, we each came from way far away places. I, I grew up in Texas and senior year at where I attended university, met a friend in a parking lot who said, I'm flying, I'm moving to California to teach music in junior high and you like to write and I hear they pay people out there to write so why don't you come with me? And it, that was the first time anyone had ever suggested picking up from where I was, going somewhere else and trying 
to write for a living. Wow. That must have been so cool. <laughs> and I'd managed to break my leg that winter on the oh. one ski trip on the west in West Texas. Not a lot of ski trips in West no, Texas. No. But when you do it and you do it like I do it, I'm in a full cast up to my up to my hip. I'm in a car with my all my belongings following Cindy all the way and made it to Los Angeles and then spent the next 10 years and I say this to folks 10 years trying to crack my way in in the door trying to figure out what I'm wow. supposed to be doing. This mm-hmm. was way before the internet or any kind of, you know, easy way to reach out to people. Yeah. Oh my god. But Eric mentioned that he had a neighbor who knew Eric wanted to, was interested in writing and there was an opportunity. I had a friend who was on a softball team. Obviously, I am not athletic, <laughs> but they invited me to join. And for one glorious summer, I was trying to play softball and, and a gal on the team. Oh, I, you want to write? Yeah. Well, they're they're taking pitches at Disney. You don't have to have an agent. So every week for six months, I went in the doors at the Disney Animation Place with my attempts to pitch for Chippendales Rescue Rangers. Oh, but man. they were the nicest people, and it was Tad Stones and Bryce Malick. And they let me keep coming back. They didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't selling yeah. anything yet, but then there was a glimmer of hope that they said, oh, okay, that's kind of an idea. Uh, see if you can expand on that. Oh, okay. And that's the one that became Kiwi's Big Adventure. Wow, that's and it, awesome. And it was one of those, it was diving in the deep end, a complete learning curve, um, using old-fashioned typewriters back then. This is as far <laughs> wow. as it was. But then I got the job at Disney, and uh, he was a fellow writer whose office ended up next being next door. door to mine, and that's how we met. But uh, again, it took a long time. God. But, the, and the doors, the door being open to writers <sighs> without agents, like you know, that's it's the world has changed so much. <laughs> oh, like yeah. I was just talking to somebody about J Ward Studios and yeah. how at J Ward back in the day when they were doing, uh, you know, uh, 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 the you know some of their shows and stuff, they they artists would come in, walk in the front door with a portfolio, portfolio. portfolio. without an appointment, and just go, here's a bunch of artwork, and they would go, yeah, go do Rocky and Bullwinkle for a little bit. <laughs> and they would like just put you on a desk, and you would just start that day. Like, be, if you were good, then you could work. Like, it was kind of yeah. a very oh, it's strange a different time. Different time. You, but, you do that now, and they who do you think you are, Jean-Claude Van Damme? <laughs> <laughs> Hans von Porsche? Yeah. <laughs> who are you, Hans von Porsche? <laughs> but I do Van want... Damme is Hans von Porsche. <laughs> oh, it writes yeah. itself. It's the movie. It yeah. writes itself. It just happens. But it I just... just want to point out to folks who yeah. are looking to make any kind of uh, career in any of this business we call show uh it helps you help yourself when you've got the stuff to show um write your spec scripts write your original pilots i'm speaking on on the writing side of things but you mentioned portfolios if you're an artist do it just put some art on paper we have had people over the course of our time. people oh i want to write i want to write okay what, what what can you show me oh um well, I, I don't have anything, but I'm really, you know, oh, cool. Because if I'm trying to, right. if I then... A lot of good charge, ideas. Yeah. I want to write just not yet. I didn't know you could <laughs> do that immediately. Right. You know, yeah. But yeah. if I'm in charge of a series, I, I don't have the luxury of signing on, bringing on someone who, whom I have never read. Yeah. And because right, there's just no time once the train has left the station. Uh, so do yourself a favor. Just put out the product. Keep churning. Uh, absolutely. And I, I always tell people, if... If you come to L.A. and you're a dancer or you're a choreographer or you're a writer or you're what you what you want out of your career, you have something you want. Tell people that that's what you want to do. Don't assume that people know that that's <laughs> right. what you want out of your life. Like, tell your neighbors that this is what you – if you're a voiceover actor, tell your next-door neighbor that you're a voiceover actor because – even though they may not do that job, you don't know. Their their yeah. father may own a store that's going to do a commercial, and they need a voiceover for the commercial. Like you never know. So the more people that know what your dream is, the the more absolutely. possible. You know that is as, as absolutely as true. I, I've absolutely. neglected to tell you that I've always wanted to be an astronaut. So can you tell <laughs> your dad, who's the president I of will, NASA? God, I will make some calls for you. Call okay, I will thank make you. Know, we, our, 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 our 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 eldest son works at SpaceX. Oh my okay, God. Okay. I, 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 I 
yeah, we're all hey, set up. See right there, this we can hook you up. We can yes. hook you up. We yeah. can hook you up, buddy. Yeah. My my longest I'll dream put has some been to. I'll feelers out on my softball team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see what like. Well, my longest dream has been to punch Elon Musk in the face. <laughs> can you hook me up? Oh, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, okay, no, we're drawing that line. Don't, no. don't tell him that at the interview. Get what we said. Keep that to yourself. I'm just saying there are no good billionaires. I'll say there are no good billionaires. That's my whole. That's it. That's it. Do tell people your dreams. Don't tell them. Don't <laughs> what you'll do with the those dreams. That are on your enemies list. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't warn your enemies. Yeah. Oh, no, there you go. That's oh, good for Hollywood. Man. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Matt <laughs> Walker, yes. you are the well, worst and the best well, of us. You really well, are. Well, Matt, Matt, can we show you? Can we show you something we brought? Oh, is it? Yes. Are we there? Is it time? Are we? Are we can pushing we, can, things? Can, oh, I, well, too I, I would. I, we should do that. Yeah. Yes, we should talk about why you guys are here. Now, first of all. Mm-hmm. Here's let me let me preface this by saying this. Uh, um, I'm 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 sitting uh, I I'm sitting at home hanging having a fun little quiet night by myself just chilling out you know eating uh, uh, Cheetos and uh, watching TV with as my, you do with my as big, is tradition with my yeah. big fat dog you know standard Monday <laughs> standard Monday I get a phone call from Mr. David Dirks now David Dirks is one of the vice presidents of Viacom and he is uh, one of the heads of ASIFA who we constantly work with which is like the animation guild you know uh, association and uh, we've we've you know been friends with him for years he hits me up and he goes Steven I'm gonna go and have dinner with uh, the voice of Drax tonight over at uh, the Smokehouse. The smokehouse. <laughs> Would you like to come for dinner? And I was like, yeah, I mean, of course. I, you know, sure, I'm not going to turn that down. That sounds like a good time. And so I, I get up. I go over and he goes, I think uh, there's other people joining us as well. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. You know, like, which is how he kind of talks. And I, <laughs> but he is always a surprise, this man. This is the yeah. guy who introduced me to Harrison Ford. Okay. <laughs> he is a magical human being. He always has a way of doing magical things. I walk in. I see the two of you. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's I was like Eric and Julia Leewald. I am such an enormous fan. Like during <laughs> during the process of doing uh, of quarantine, I watched the X Men animated series. Rewatched it. I watched it when I was a kid, but I rewatched it because Mike Black, my my dear friend here, yes. the, <laughs> the voice of our show, told me, he he had watched. You know, he loves the show. I told him that they were on Disney Plus again. I was like, you gotta start watching them. Oh yeah. So I was I watched I had watched all of Silver Surfer. I had watched all of the X Men animated series. I've been going through all of it, right? So I'd been researching and looking through like who was writing it, who was a part of it, and everything like this. And I knew that Margaret had been a part of it, but then. I knew the two of you had been a part of it. So when I saw you two, I was like, oh my God, (laughs) am I having dinner with the people who created one of my favorite TV shows of all time? And then, and then you guys are like, oh, by the way, there's a book. And I'm like, there's a book. And you're like, yeah, here it is. And you pull out the book. Now you, you guys can attest to this. I out. It was wonderful. He, he, it was he, he, he became imagine. a puddle on the floor. There was people just people were was... staring at me in the restaurant. I was like, "You've got to be fucking kidding me! You've got to be fucking!" I was like, "Mike Black is gonna murder me when he knows that I just had dinner with you." And there's a yeah. book, so they are here to talk about this book which yeah. is and to keep me from murdering Steve. yeah <laughs> it's, it, this is a safety protocol to oh, have you guys here very, okay uh, like that wh- Hey, uh, before we continue doing the show, I, we got to talk about uh, the the equipment that we're using mm-hmm. to make the show, uh, make an epic show that is. Uh, it sounds like you know everyone is right here, like yep. we're all sitting together, but we're not. We've got a fantastic multi track recorder from Zoom. Um, yeah. If you need multi track recordings, that's the only company you should even be looking at. Um, basically, we had issues when we had to switch to doing things during a pandemic, mm-hmm. and we were we went from doing a show with people in person to people over the phone and zoom just made it a piece of cake yeah you bet zoomcorp.com is the website and uh they're you know this has made it so that we could interview people in uh nigeria new zealand new zealand um guatemala um uh, austria czechos like the czech the czech republic 
um, when we were Are doing all those. Are you just naming countries now? Yeah. Well, no. When we were doing all the interviews with the cast of uh, 90 Day Fiance, we were yeah. talking to people you know, in, the, in the Ukraine. Yep. Like mm-hmm. We were doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And then just the other day when we had uh, John Reese davies on the show. From New Zealand. He was in New Zealand the whole time. Sounded it sounded like, like he was here. sitting in the room with us. Yeah. yeah. It truly is the mark of excellence for podcasting. Zoom, live track L8, 8-track mixer, recorder, the board for creators, podcasting, music, and beyond. Yeah, it is a badass system, and uh, we're very lucky to be working with uh, Zoom. Go check out zoomcorp.com. That's zoomcorp.com. Dot com zoom you have to say it three times that's what people do in ad, ads right zoom, what is it steven zoomcorp.com it's zoomcorp.com we're talking about zoomcorp.com all right let's get back to the show it, 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 tell us about the book and then we're going to reveal it i'm going to open i'm going to we're going to open the package and, and check well it, it's, it, it's it, a big 4 pound art book yes. it's got oh like 1200 images in it with the all. full support of disney and marvel behind this which yeah. is a huge thing people yeah. that they wanted this book to happen because we we'd, we'd written a book before without their participation in 2017 which is basically just almost all text and some black and white uh, an oral and, history of the yeah, show which is really dense with oral history but it, w- it wasn't this big, beautiful thing that the fans would look at and say, oh, my God, i got to have that. So <laughs> that came out, and some people at Marvel saw it, and Marvel had just retained all the – got the rights back to the to the show, which had been mixed with Fox, oh. and said, let's make, let's make a companion to the first one. Let's make a big coffee table book out of the art of the X-Men because yeah. uh, you know, it's top of our list uh, to do. So Abrams Books, which is a really nice uh, you know, art publisher in New York – uh, got together and we we wrote we wrote it fast and the hard part was there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of draw of hand paintings made to do the show back in the day and sketches and model sheets and prop lists and yeah. and all the stuff that went into the production of the show that we got bits and pieces of from people's basements but ninety nine point nine percent of it is just lost yeah mm-hmm. and people at at art galleries have some of it have some cells. Uh, producers, artists kept stuff. We had this wonderful guy that uh, cleaned up all the character designs for episodes 14 through 76, and he had every single one, in, you know, in his computer. Mark so, Lewis, we got to give Lewis. props. Yeah, credit so, where yeah. credit so, is due. So, in the book, we go through every episode, and even if it's a secondary character, there will be the official model design wow. that oh, Mark cool. had held wow. on to. Plus, you know, I. If we could find some beautiful cell work to go with it to help out illustrate it, we did that. We were able to pull stuff from the pulling stuff from the screen is a little complicated because the resolution was a lot lower 30 years ago. Yeah, sure. But they did a beautiful job. The book people did a beautiful job. They managed to make it look current. And all wow. those Easter eggs you think you saw, we we hope we caught most of them here, so you can actually verify. Oh my God, yeah. that was who I thought it was. Be- because oh, so that was fun. Because cool. yeah. these book guys at Abrams, they are so anal. They're so specific <laughs> in the they're best so way possible. Fan, they're so <laughs> fan focused, and this is the so and so the 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 third revision of Rogue's costume, costume yeah. in episode 54 where you know the sleeves missing or what it, it's yeah. all there it's all there in the little secondary uh, footnotes so it's for, so for f- crazed fans there's lots and lots of visual detail well that show was insane about that about having like all these little like cameos and just background props <laughs> and designs and stuff like that that you're like oh i recognize that yeah. from the comics and this sort of thing, you know. Yeah, Larry, Larry Houston and the art staff and Will Minio get credit for that because they were the ones that, that were just such X-Men lovers. We on the writing side, most of us just, we were just into telling heroic, intense heroic stories. And I want to just, I'm jumping in, but it, this was 1992 and there was no internet, there was no right. interweb. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it, you, uh, I'm you challenging. You Google anything. Yeah, I'm challenging folks to remember back then, most folks couldn't name an X-Men. And you go, right. oh, come on. So, no, 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 no. In 1992, most folks weren't familiar with the concept of the X-Men. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they could, could tell you Batman. They could probably tell you Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, but uh, yeah. starting to trail off there. So one of the marching orders was with this show was going to be to introduce the X-Men to an entire audience that probably didn't know who they were. Right. 
And then here we are. It's going to be 30 years this next year. And now everybody on the planet knows who they are. We, this household, household yeah, yeah, which is practice, astonishing you know. to think of. Yeah, we can't we can't step off a plane in Singapore without <laughs> being grabbed by the TSA agents and say, "Oh, tax man, I mean, it's my, my favorite, my favorite." <laughs> It's so much. It's that, so crazy. Great. You know, and what's so crazy too is like, and Mike knows this. We, him, and I will go see you know Marvel movies together. Mm, sure. And some, I, I love those movies, but every once in a while we'll see one, and I kind of walk away from it. You know, kind of not like I kind of go, oh, you know, I kind of <laughs> wish, you know. You know, and Mike will be like, "What could you possibly have wanted more?" <laughs> and I go, you know, like another character like another cameo a new a a character we've never seen before showing up on screen would have been really neat and that comes from your show because on your show you guys would always you spoiled us as well you did you spoiled us you would have you know 25 characters that were always around and then you'd throw in just you know sauron or some sort of (laughs) like amazing character that you're like how is this guy in this like this is so damn cool so yeah it's like now 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 I'm 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 I am expecting it. If they don't <laughs> if they don't deliver Guardians of the Galaxy two level versions right. of, of like tons of new characters, I get frustrated. So well, since he's not here to share the story, Larry Houston is the one who gets credit for that because he was a huge comic book fan, and you know Thor would run through the scene in a Silver Surfer and say, "Hey kids, you want to find out more about this?" And he in the thought, books, oh. he, yeah. that was kind of that version of their universe. And so he <laughs> very early in the first season tried to put. A cameo of, of Spider-Man, you know, in in an episode, it got shut down by the lawyers. The lawyers saw it and said, "You can't do Spider-Man." Goes, but but it's Marvel, and we're it's all one Spider-Man. big happy family. Yeah. Can't do that. Okay, fine. So then he on, on Slave Island, I think, was a big one for him. Yeah. Uh, drew uh, a mutant and just called it Mutant Number Two, as uh-huh. opposed to identifying it yeah. in the storyboard. And it got through the lawyers. Yeah. And then he goes, oh, oh okay, I could fine. do this with everybody. I could do this with Black Panther. and, and right. with, yeah. yeah. Thor, it's Sp- Spider-Man Thor, does show Watcher, up later in an uh, episode. Doctor Strange, yeah. they're all, Doctor they're Strange there. goes to the, their wedding, <laughs> you yeah. know, as, as a guest. He has four cameos in the series. It's just, as long as Larry didn't use, write down the name, and we didn't write it in the script, he didn't write it in the storyboard, mm-hmm. it just said, man walks through wedding. And wow. he knows he knows it's going to be Doctor Strange, and we all know it's going to be Doctor Strange. And it's Doctor Strange in the storyboard, the visual, yeah. but he's not identified, yeah, but, but, and it's not in color. Okay. But, but they they didn't they never caught none of it. So well, there were there are literally because couple... the lawyers weren't X Men fans no, at all. Right. No. So they they don't know. Right. Yeah, oh and, and in the God. end, at the end, it's only it's a benefit that. for the company. <laughs> it, oh, but it's just, absolutely. But but yeah. the but. You know how TV is. Nobody takes a chance on anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so taking little chances like this were just fun things that we did to indulge ourselves, like the, the stories we wrote. It was so low rent. It's hard to think back. But we basically were unsupervised. We were like, it was like we were playing in a garage yeah. when we did this because Marvel was about to go uh, bankrupt. And Fox was just starting. There was a little bitty uh, uh, network that had, was only on half the day. That's another thing. ABC, CBS, NBC, those had been the big three national broadcasting networks mm-hmm. for perpetuity. And then yeah. in the late 80s, early 90s, Fox says, we're going to try and become a network. Yeah. It, had, it had never succeeded before. Right. DuMont had tried other networks. You couldn't do it. And these guys were monster giants. Yeah. But Fox said, okay, we're going to try. So they're buying up the UHF stations and <laughs> trying to syndicate this thing and they were willing to take some risks yeah. at a time when the big three networks were already margaret, comfortable yeah margaret lesh and sydney i want to really the two creative people at the top there for the kids yeah. stuff kept on saying we have a chance now let's push let's, let's we have to distinguish ourselves we do from the other networks from the big three because they've got 10 times our resources <laughs> you know push the envelope and we'll back you Wow. And we, we, I've been seven years writing for all sorts of people, for Disney, Hanna Barbera, all sorts of people. Never, it was always, oh, you're pushing this way too far. We have to pull it back because we could, you know, frighten the nine year olds. It just, it was always, <laughs> yeah. we, okay, we've got a, a couple psychologists on staff. They say you can't do that story. <laughs> yeah. S- tap it down, tap About it down. About 70% yeah. of Wolverine's life can, can <laughs> right. be done. Yeah. Yeah. And believe me, believe me, we, it could have happened to the X Men and yeah. it could have been terrible. But yeah. we got this perfect storm of two great executives and then a great censor named uh, Aud- Avery, uh, Avery Coburn, Coburn. The gal who was in charge of broadcast standards and practices. And she got us and said, we want to put morphine here so we can kill him in the first story. Ah. And she didn't believe it was going to go through. And back, I back and forth with Avery, wrote emails back and forth for a week 
got her trust, said, okay, you're going to do it off screen, and you're, it's not going to be uh, gratuitous, but we're going to let you, we're going to let you kill one of the main staff. Uh, uh, character that with her story unheard of it was at that time. and the point of it that was, was her, not her. again not gratuitous but to show that in this world there are consequences there are stakes there yeah. are stakes wow. it's not going to get reset every week yeah. and everyone's going to be fine and, and I couldn't believe you were taking that on dead. yeah yeah he was supposed to stay he dead. was supposed to stay but, dead but, but seriously we, we've, we've talked to thousands of people at cons over the last four years since the, the first early book came out and majority of the fans say that's when I just really knew oh god this is a different this is a different yep. show that's something I haven't seen before yeah. so oh and we were only picked up for 13 episodes that was it one and done there was and we not were a all let go after 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 we all after we all wrote and and drew the first series because it the takes nine months wow. it takes nine months we were done writing in July they were done drawing in September and it premiered in January, mm-hmm. and so the big premiere in January. So we were all like, "Oh, we were, we were working on other shows when it came out. <laughs> oh, it's it's like the number one show on by a big margin." Can most of you come back, please? Because yeah. there were no contracts. And, <laughs> and okay, here's, here's my story. To, we forgot oh, to please. extend the contract. Um, you remember that funny joke where I fired the whole staff? <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious, wasn't it? I'll so, see you guys on Monday. <laughs> as one of the writers, it's like, well, this is exciting. It's a, it's the biggest hit. And, you know, okay, and more money. Yeah, where's perhaps? our friends' yeah. money? Where's, yeah. You know, yeah. Right. <laughs> and Haib Saban had a twist on that. He said, wait a minute. This is such a huge hit. Yeah. I Any, got a, everybody's going to want to write for this. I got a line of people out the door. You <laughs> oh, want to write for this? I'm going to cut the fees 500 bucks. Huh? And so after what? he was handed a number one hit, mm-hmm. and it, it went international and everything was cool, he said, well, if you want to come back and write for the show, fine, $500 less. Yeah. And what? everybody. Oh, yeah. kidding. And the first, yeah. se- the first season, <laughs> I, I, I got I to raise. The first season, I supplemented. That for, the, for season two, Eric yeah, supplemented yeah, all of his writers, yeah. the extra but, 500. Because wow. wow. as I said before, <laughs> there are no good billionaires. That's what I'm saying. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Wow. And, 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 he'd, be, and he'd be proud. And, he'd yeah. be, and if, 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 you, if we were sitting here, he'd smile and he'd be proud of that moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'd say, of course. Why not? You know, but, oh, why, why, I should, have, I should have cut it a thousand. What are you like? Yeah. So those first 13 episodes, the point was... We didn't think it was going. No one thought it was going to go past that. So you know, just, just crank it and pedal crank to the metal. Kind just, of what kind of stories yeah. can you tell? Okay, life and death. You know, sadness and grief, and that's where the idea of morph yeah, being introduced as a character for the purpose of showing how much the X Men were their own mm-hmm. sort of found family, yeah. and then his impact on each of them, which he's only it's it's brief. He's not there that long, but then when Eric got the call, oh, okay, we're going to go for a second season, uh, there was but. A, but. <laughs> They, okay. the, 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 the evil that is focus groups happened. <laughs> and what happened was six or seven episodes into the, the showing of the season, the first season, they got a bunch of little kids together and said, well, who's your favorite X? We're, we're renewing it. Who's yeah. your favorite X-Men? And Morph won in a landslide. <laughs> oh, my God. A, I think A, it was because he was the, the funny one, but B, mm-hmm. we had made him so sympathetic. To each the, of the X-Men. You know, the, the, every, yeah. Wol, it, Wol, he was, Wolverine's, he's the only one that ever made me laugh. <laughs> and he's dead. I will avenge him. <laughs> so we did all this to build up his loss for everybody else in, in the group. <laughs> oh, no. And that somehow got to the kids in a way that yeah. we, it was, un, you know, was beyond what we intended. And so... The network begged us. We know how much this meant to you, but can this be a a comic book death? Can he come back as something else? You know, P- T- T- PTSD, whatever. And so yeah. we 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 came with the PTSD thing, but it was not a good week because it had meant yeah. so much to us that this was real and mm-hmm. that the consequences yeah. were real. But, but then again, the way you guys were able to work that morph into the the next season with the consequences of what happened to him, I think, made him an even deeper character. Yeah, and. Sure, it would have been nice if that hadn't happened and you hadn't had to go back and do but, that, but you know. I think... And, yeah. and I'll tell you, his specific mutant power of being a shapeshifter, it's really it helped. added so much into it when he was brought back, when he wasn't able to control it, and it just, it was, you literally could see the pain of what he was going through yeah. in the different manifestations oh. of his power. 
Yeah, and it was and, really, really excellently well done. You know, and and again, it was the animation. You know, we we weren't Batman. You know, in other words, yeah. the budget wasn't there, but the fact that you can still recall that and yeah. have those feelings, I think, is a huge testimony. And he's still like, I am a massive uh, action figure collector. He's still one of the most requested uh, characters. Okay. They haven't done him yet. I think they're waiting for uh-huh. like a special uh-huh. thing to do it, but he's wins in landslides all the time in the like most requested character because yeah. yeah. well, they got to give him like seven bodies of Lois yeah. yeah. like probably things, yeah. right no what you know. they need to do is just have one interchangeable yeah. head of exactly. morph for all of the characters that's all they, they already have the molds for the other ones <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like trying to make like a Shang Tsung figure for Mortal Kombat right. where like he's everyone so there you go yeah. well, and people like contribute their own like drawing ideas they're yeah. like you could do this you could, <laughs> he could come with this jacket and that sort of stuff wait a minute we have uh, yeah. an author of GoBots who can talk <laughs> yeah. about transforming transforming yeah, exactly. go yeah. come on you. now yes. <laughs> alright let's we, let's let's, oh, let's, let's, can I, let's yeah. pop, oh, 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 pop the book oh, yeah. wait wait wait, wait, wait. Oh, question so you have some packages I, I, Stephen will post a photo of the package you took a picture of this already oh yeah okay Oh, yeah. I, it's I, probably already on your Instagram. I'm no, I posted it on Facebook, just saying anyone want to make a guess yeah. at what's happening. Okay, so but we're gonna, you know, what we'll do we'll do a video. You know, well, it's a, no, 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 I, no. I got it. I got you it. You got it. You got yeah, it. Yeah. Don't okay. worry, this is gonna be great. Um, okay, let's talk. Let's oh, talk I'm, about this. You had a question. Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking. You get the assignment to do X Men. It's already been around about thirty years right. at that point. So we're talking probably 200 members of, well, of the team overall. I, How did you decide on that core team? Well, that, there was, it, was, it was kind of freeing uh, that there'd been so many. Yeah. Uh, and look at, looking back over the 25 years of it, because then there wasn't just a canon. It wasn't like, well, there's, only, there's a main team and two or three alternatives. There were, yeah, you're right, there were dozens we could have chosen. And part of it was... Marvel and the network had, you know, Marvel had people that they were high on, like Wolverine, obviously, is the most popular character that they've got. Uh, the network, you know, they, they, they wanted one young character, and so picked Jubilee. She was yeah. the one that, they, that Marvel was pushing at the time. Gambit was new, uh, and so that was a request from, uh, from Marvel for that. Um, and the... I would say that show made Gambit yeah. as far yeah. as like yeah. making him such a popular character. But from the writer's point of view, they picked four or five that they thought were core, which included Cyclops, but did not include Jean Grey, did not include Xavier, did yeah. not include Beast. Um, so, but as we laid out the first thirteen stories, my buddy Mark Edens and I, who laid out the first two seasons with me. Um, these characters kept on asserting themselves. Beast was so cool. He was going to yeah. be just a, a secondary character. Put him in. That's why we put him in prison. Right. <laughs> because we Civil weren't, we weren't going to see him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he was just, we just kept on looking and saying, well, what is the most diverse group? Not yeah. ethnically diverse, but what are the, the, the most distinct characters we can have? So there's, they're so different from each other yeah. that there's no question whose line this is. It's like in Winnie the Pooh, the characters are so completely different from each other. Tigger and Pooh, and it's slightly different tone, but the right. point is they've got seven or eight people there that you would never res- uh, mistake, uh, mistake yeah. Uh, yeah. Owl for Piglet. Yeah. So yeah. you don't want to have six big gruff, you could have had Cable and Bishop and and Colossus and Deadpool and, and, yeah. Deadpool yeah. and Colossus and, and, yeah. and Wolverine. You could have had six, seven big gruff guys beating on each other. Would not have been a fun show. <laughs> right. So we're looking for... Diversity among them and diversity of powers because it's animated. We want to see this stuff. Yeah. We don't want to have just like six really strong people or six people that can disappear or can fly. Flying was good because mm-hmm. that's cheaper yeah. than walking in, yep. anim- in, in our level of animation. <laughs> sure. mm-hmm. uh, being able to blow stuff up, you know, cities up, whatever. Uh, the mental stuff is good because, again, that's something we could afford. Yeah. Professor X yeah. looks at somebody yeah. and, you know, the, 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 Thing shakes. So just practical questions, but the core of it was making the characters more diverse made the writing easier for us. Yeah. And so we were very we were very selfish about that. And that's why we <laughs> picked certain people and didn't pick, you know, Archangel's cool, Iceman's cool, there are all these there, oh, yeah. there, there are a dozen other people we could have used, but the balance we got just suited us and it happened to be half women. And that was not yeah. you know, that was not a feminist statement. That was just how it for, for animation, you know, 
Yeah. Storm is like nobody else. It's great. You know, mm-hmm. bring her on. And, and Rogue, Rogue has such a backstory. Yeah, oh Rogue has this, this coolest backstory oh. ever. You know, yeah. she's she's going to suffer more than anybody, except for maybe Wolverine, who's almost 100 years old and yeah. has been through <laughs> so much. That just comes from being yeah. 100. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But so, yeah, that's how, that's how we picked it. What made the writing easier and more exciting and more fun for us? And yeah. And they went, and as I say, Marvel basically was look, you're sending us a check. As long as you don't screw this up and get the characters wrong, you know, you're, we're signed off on. That's and, great. And Fox yeah. had the final cut. Marvel didn't. Yeah. So if we we wow. send uh, we send a, like a story to Marvel and they said well, we just don't like this at all, we could call back and say, well, you know, but we do. So thanks for the input. <laughs> wow. And that's crazy. Yeah. yeah which yeah. today yeah. that's that's it's insanity. You yeah. Can, I, yeah. You, you do not tell Marvel that <laughs> you're going to do it anyway. Hey, Matt, before we continue doing the show, mm-hmm. we got to talk about what we're talking into. These Sennheiser microphones are fantastic. Yeah, they are literally top of the line. The best company in the world when it comes to microphones, headphones, audio equipment like this. I mean, yeah. it's just so damn good. If you want to sound good talking into something, get yourself some Sennheiser microphones. Yeah, it makes you sound epic. Mike Black, uh, say something epic. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages. Um, If I say any more, lawyers will get involved. (laughs) Here we have to. (laughs) Exactly. But But I said it clearly, and you you can hear it clearly. God, I can hear it. It sounds perfect. Um, Hey, uh, go and uh, go check out Sennheiser. If you are looking for audio equipment, uh, you're looking for a great microphone. This is the one to use, Mike. Matt, what is what's this one called that, that we're using? Uh, this is the MD42. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. It's absolutely perfect. Find them at Sennheiser.com. You bet. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, well, here we go. Okay. Well, okay. Drum roll, please. We have, today we have uh, Julia and Eric Leewald here, uh, the writers and, uh, and one of the creators of the X-Men animated series, and they have a brand new book out, and uh, this guy here, Mr. Mike Black, is a pretty huge fan of uh, the X-Men <laughs> animated series. So, uh, are you ready to unbox? Are you ready to unbox this thing? I'm gonna unbox. Oh, oh, this All right, one. You're gonna, he's gonna, this was facing oh, you the right way. This one's... Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is, yeah, ready. This is for all the marbles here we go or marvels oh Uh, wow oh my god and that's 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 a a new original artwork by larry houston and rick hober who were two of the three main artists on the show take a look at that cover that is absolutely and and, and on the on the back are the villains also by the same two guys also uh, specifically commissioned for this book (laughs) how badass (laughs) all right let's name for the people that are that are listening to the show tell them who is on the cover we have rogue bishop wolverine storm cyclops gambit gene gray morph jubilee and beast let's hope i'm as good on the bad guys (laughs) Mystique, Omega Red, Apocalypse, a Sentinel, Sabretooth, Magneto, the Master of Magnetism, Sauron, Juggernaut, and Mr. Sinister. Very good. Very good. Well Very played, good. Mike. Well played. Thank you. Well done. Uh, pop it. Just pop, pop oh. it open. Just take. Just open to any page. Open to any, any page. page. Oh. oh yeah. So look there is artwork that. clearly right from the show. Yeah. Like those, those, look at those. whose hand is there. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's Spider Man's hand. Right yeah, there that go. was that was one of those Very sneak ins. Cool. And then and 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 then there's some uh, about uh, I think 300 original cells. That's one with Jubilee wow. with the Morlocks. Mm-hmm. And then uh, design work from the character designers and from the storyboard artists. Now this is direct from a comic book. Yes, it is right. from the Hellfire Club. It sure I is. Noticed it right as you were turning the page. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and there's I think call the, out that I think there's a, a page that has the two side by side. Yeah, the reference the sheet oh, in there. Cool. There's a reference sheet showing how the two are similar. It's, wow! Yeah. And just look, just I some, love some this spread characters. right this here. This type of stuff right here. This is the type of stuff when I was a kid, I would just stare at for hours, freaking out about how, you know, just reading every last little detail. It's so and seeing cool. like the think, the proportions in the artwork, like how it's actually drawn, uh, is yes. very interesting because you know like when we had uh, what was his name? I'm sorry, the comic artist we talked to in Orlando. Oh my God! Um, um, but he talked about Neil Adams. Neil, Neil Adams, that's Adams. right. Oh my God! So Neil Adams, too. God. and he talked about how Neil like Neil Adams for him 
doing superheroes is a lot of the same over and over again. Mm -hmm. But I think something like the X-Men gives you more diversity because you're not drawing the same – it's not the same dude in a suit with a cape, right? Right. It's all kinds of different stuff that you get to do in here where they look different, which I think is probably something that uh, I I find more interesting as somebody who's not really a big comic book guy yeah um but well, at least you look amazing. at this and it's like the very different okay. yeah and, and yeah. this is kind of show it's interesting it shows that that when you see something it's eight or nine different cells it's yeah. three mm-hmm. or three or four cells like this one is yeah. the, the the sketch one is coloring it in another is is detailing the so detailing. that's three or four cells that for the, will background. Make the background and then you'll have six or seven cells of various people moving in various directions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so you maybe need a dozen cells just to get uh, a fifteenth of a second Good old and then audio you have cassettes. To, then you have to redraw <laughs> oh seven or eight of them. That's, yeah. Where, where is it available? Where can people? Where or where will it be available? It is currently. It's out. It's available. Uh, Barnes and Nobles. Barnes and Noble. Most, has, most big bookstores book have bookstores. it. Your, your comic book stores will probably have it. Amazon. Mm-hmm. I got to do one last thing here because this cracks me up. It's available on Amazon right now, and they've it's it's at a real price break there. Mm-hmm. I love this. This is from Larry Houston's original uh, storyboarding for the opening sequence of the X Men, and wow. it continues on the back. A thing that I confirmed with him, and it cracked me up. You'll notice the pips here when you got Gambit, and he's coming at the camera, and the cards are going. Mm-hmm. And we were putting the book together. I said something's not right to my eye, and it turned out. Yeah. The, one, the, 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 the spade is upside down. The spade down. is good eye. Yeah. The spade is upside down. I, and he said, oh, I'll, oh, that has to be a mistake. He went back and goes, no, I drew it upside down. <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> so next time you watch it, catch, look, keep your eye open for that upside down spade there. That's so cool. <laughs> if you go frame by frame. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Pause it on Disney Plus frame by frame. You'll yeah. see that uh, upside down spade. Oh, so that do you like so it? so cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. oh it's amazing. so Oh, cool. I was, Mike is going to have that in his bed next to him for the next week, sleeping <laughs> on a pillow with him. Well, <laughs> I'll be holding it like this. So He'll be curled up with it like a yeah. teddy bear. Uh, there was a Spider-Man book that was like an art of Spider-Man comics or something uh-huh. book from what I think when I was maybe about 14 or 15 years old that came out. That was big, thick, colorful book. And I spent so much time just looking through all the microscopic <laughs> details of trying to like learn all the little facts and all the things. Just because if you love something, it's nice to be able to have something that you can do a deep dive on, yeah. you know, and really, really get, you know, uh, like, you know, have a place where you can read everything about it. Because up to this point, you know, you have to, I, I, right now, I'd have to just go and ser- search on Google to mm-hmm. read the Wikipedia so <laughs> of yeah. Storm yeah. and these characters to figure it all out but to be able to have it all right there yeah. is just and, and where can people get the first book the oral oh. history oh. funny you should mention yeah. <laughs> this uh, besides both these could be ordered from directly from their publishers which okay. is kind oh, of interesting wow. uh, this was Abrams books um, and this I, I believe it's probably going to be like at all the at, uh, the, all the Disneylands and everything too. We hope so. You know, Marvel. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we hope so. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah, California Adventure. But, oh yeah, the Adventures. Yeah, campus. but the first book, the Oral History, that was that we did that all as I say, all by ourselves. We interviewed <laughs> thirty six <laughs> people. It's four hundred and fifty pages of dense, uh, you know, hit you know how it all was almost went off the rails seven or eight times, and and how you know we struggled to keep it together, and then it became the most the coolest job we ever had. Um, so cool. And that was uh, that's it's Jacobs Brown Press. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a small California press in San Diego, and they were one of two people that were interested in working with us just alone without Marvel, and said, well, you know, we we know they're 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 a pop culture press. They've got lots of Star Trek books, uh, history of television kind of books, and so we fit right in with them. Wow. We encourage you to, to check out your local comic book shop or your local bookstore because this yeah. last year has just been a disaster. Oh, and we yeah. encourage that. But they are both of them available on Amazon. So mm-hmm. if you have trouble tracking it down, we, we encourage you to, to check out good old Amazon. Do you guys have a cool. favorite uh, comic book shop or uh, toy oh, shop? Oh, gee. Uh, well, um, Perky Nerd in Burbank. Uh, just <laughs> oh, nicest really? people. It's a great name. Ni- I've never been like, to the Perky Nerd oh, in Burbank. Well, in I, that there's, case, there's some I go nice to Burbank people. all the time. I go to Blast from the Past. Yes. Oh, that's, that's, that's good. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were nice. They they hosted us uh, for one of the first book signings when the first mm-hmm. book came out. They're, oh, they're nice people. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. What about you, Mike? Where is it? Do you have a toy uh, place that you like or a Golden Apple? Ooh, oh, yeah. that's that's a classic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
they were here before I moved here and were part of the reason I did. I was like, if they have places like this here, I, I want to live here. Oh, that's the best. Um, you know that they yeah. carried uh, the nighttime show comic book? Our, oh, yeah. our yeah, podcast comic book. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that me and Matt Walker sat for, what, 47 hours? <laughs> to make one issue, yes. To make one issue <laughs> with this comic book. It yes. took us four ever yeah. <laughs> to make wow. it but it but then uh golden apple carried it and and uh would give it away for on free comic book day it was very cool yeah was that very nice is my yeah. God. yeah we made it for la comic-con uh <laughs> in 2019 i think it was yeah. and yeah. we would have done we were going to do issue two for the last year but then there was no oh. comic-con so yeah. oh um, there that, will be another but issue. the next one we will, we will do one. issue number two you yes better believe it of course that's 47 more hours what's the so some Somebody's drawing you in poses. Well, yeah, yeah. David Dirks actually did. Dirks did one, one of, of the no. pages. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had different comic book artists. We took um, three segments from our show that and, uh, we and wrote out, them into comic book. Oh and my And then God. had them illustrated in comic book form. So yeah, yeah. Okay. I, uh, Bruce, David Dirks Bruce illustrated Valange, the. Uh, he did the section with Doug Jones talking about working on uh, Hocus Pocus. Dear and God. And when he had like the moths in his mouth. Mm-hmm. That he had to do for the scene, and how like the the light bursts, so he's stuck with moths in his mouth while, and he's trying to keep while them alive, because <laughs> they're supposed to come fluttering out of his mouth, and like, and he has like his his uh, mouth is sewn shut, and they had to like cut a knife across the thing. But it's illustrated in the nighttime show. Comp- oh, but, uh, by the way, you, you mentioned you mentioned Neil Adams. The yeah. the, oh the, the the first P- oh, PR wow. art that was made for the show before the show was even was even drawn mm-hmm. uh, that Saban uh, got going. Um, Will Minio, who was the main designer, was just underwater doing this show and a second one that he was working on at the same time. So they called up Neil Adams, and he he drew that mm-hmm. that famous poster. Yeah, so there's, wow. there's artwork on the back of the uh, previously on X Men book. But you'll um, notice who's not in that poster, which tells you. A, yeah, that, since it was it was, was no pre-production Jean, that we no hadn't Jean written Grey. scripts there's yet. There's no Beast. No, really? no, yeah. Oh, because you didn't know there. who was going to be in. We didn't know who was going to be starring no, yet. They had an idea, idea, but uh, our, our episode with Neil yeah, Adams no is yeah. so interesting. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. It's, it's I love that. Kind it's of a very detail. fun. Our our interview with Neil Adams basically went off the rails <laughs> as fast as an interview could, where we said to him, uh, well, "When you were working on Batman, uh, did you ever get to meet Bob Kane?" <laughs> and he said, uh, "He said, yeah, Bob Kane came over to me, and he said." He said, hey, uh, that's not how you draw Batman. And I said, fuck you, Bob Kane. I do it the way I do it. You don't even draw this anymore. Get out of my office. That guy was such an asshole. We were like, what? And then he was like, we were like, what was this guy? What was Jack Kirby like? He was like, oh, Jack Kirby was a real prick. He used to come home. Jesus. I mean, he, 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 he literally crapped on yeah. Every single person you can imagine, it was, uh, except for Stanley, he had nice Aww. things to it, say. It was the opposite of Tom McFarlane, who was like, he's like, then I got asked to ink a Todd Kerr or a Jack Kirby piece, and I kept the eraser shavings. I, cr- yeah. I cried erasing yeah. his drawing. You're gonna yeah. like, it's the complete opposite. It's total opposite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah McFarlane was incredibly, incredibly nice. He, he was, was so was gracious about everyone. So McFarlane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that was, yeah. There was, we've had a couple that were kind of like very strange. He's like, I still have the pencil shavings. Shavings in, my, in a bag. He in does. He really does. In have a bag. A pe- pencil shavings in a bag. Like, it's not a joke. I saw Neil Adams at a convention, and some kid was just in awe of all the work that he had done that was behind him. And he goes, "Quit staring at it and come over here and talk to me." <laughs> <laughs> okay. like, Somebody, someone said that at the conventions, Neil Adams uh, will draw anything. Uh-huh. Basically, uh-huh. anything that you ask him to draw, he'll draw it. Yeah. Like, like, but you have to pay him a lot oh, of money to oh, do yeah. it. Okay. And so what happens is the other artists, they'll the people come up to artists <laughs> there and they'll say, "Can you draw Deadpool having sex with, <laughs> with like, you know, a, a hamster or something <laughs> horrifying?" And and he'll go, uh, he'll go, uh, uh, the, the artist will go. No, but you know who does a great job? <laughs> Neil Adams. And then they'll send them to Neil, and then he'll go, I don't know why I get all these weird requests. <laughs> that's that's, the a, that's best. 100% true. Oh, my God. <laughs> so there are some weird drawings out there of, yeah. of Neil Adams. And he Neil owns Adams a comic done. shop in Burbank. Yes. He, he does. Yeah. He does. Oh, good or, or Lord, it's, yeah. It's Burbank Studio City, somewhere out yeah. in the valley. Yeah, Somewhere up there. God, yeah. good Lord. What's it called? 
another world. Get out of my store. Get out of my store and buy something. All right. No, I love it. I love it. Um, I have uh, when when uh, when when we sat and uh, and chatted at dinner, there was well, something that we talked about that I was I thought was uh, interesting, yeah. uh, very very uh, compelling. Is that the the two of you guys? You guys have been together for how long? How long have you been married? We, for? Well, we've been married. I got to get it right. Yeah. Uh, 30, <laughs> 31 glorious years. Thirty one glorious years. years. Yeah, we met we met in eighty eight, and mm-hmm. we were married in ninety. Yeah. So okay, all right. So. Um, how uh, in, you guys have worked together? Yes, for most ba- of the shows. most of that time, right? Yeah. What is it like being a couple that works together and writes together? I mean, what what's that like? What's that process? Diplomatic. Like? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's he kind says of, that now. But <laughs> that is, has it always <laughs> has it always worked for you, or has it yeah. been? I, been uh, what's that like for someone for, for a writer? We each have our we have we're lucky we have a home office and we have we each have our own desk and we each have our own workstations. But if you're deep in the thought process on a project, you're kind of just head down, and it doesn't matter where you are. And typically, you know, each of us would have whatever work we're doing, and then sometime, oh, is it is it lunchtime? Oh, do, do, you ready to go to lunch? And that's oh hi, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. there. Yeah, you're still there. And go out and have lunch. That was our big break for the day. Come back and just head down again and keep working. Yeah. It it's it's the geography of it is less collaborative than perhaps it would be if if you were uh, working on a, a show tune with someone or is it, this this yeah. is just not so much back and forth. Mm-hmm. When, yeah. when when we're developing the new show, there's certainly a lot of, lot back of and that. Forth, but most of it's like okay, they just we got we've been given eight. Uh, episodes. You take these four. I'll take this four, and I'll, you know I'll see you in a month. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so that uh, that that made that. Uh, it, it just that actually sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. but but it's also there's this the the the, the war buddy thing. There were you know a lot of, a yeah. lot of uh, uh, couples you know say how could you have the same job? Well, we we get mad at the same people. <laughs> you know, we, we have the same so stresses. True. We we understand. What, when the other person has a bad day, we absolutely empathize because we've just been through similar or the same thing. So yeah. oh, wow. it, it's, it, can, it, it can be a bonding thing, like mm-hmm. war buddies. Did you ever have times where you'd be arguing about something that was going to go in the show, and then does that fight carry on when you get home? <laughs> or does, are you, well, we're are you already like, at home. Already so. at home. <laughs> yeah. 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 But like, yeah. were you ever able to be like, hey, like this is work stuff, now it's Work's over. Yeah. It's eight o'clock. We don't need to talk about that anymore. We can just enjoy each other's company, and yeah. then we'll fighting about it tomorrow, tomorrow, it, some more. It, whatever. I think the only, and I say only in a handful of times, and watch us go home and have complete meltdown now. Mm-hmm. But only a handful <laughs> of times, uh, I have written for you when you're a story editor. You've written for me when I'm a story editor. We write together if we're working for someone else or for ourselves. We kind of had a deal where we each got one. Mm-hmm. Like on a script or a series, we each get yeah. one. Uh, like it's completely wrong to me, but you get this one. Let's move on. But that's it. That's and the only and one. Don't, I get. And, don't, and don't obsess. Yeah, because it and he could gets get one. it could get changed along the line anyway. So and, much and, of it does, you know, but, with, yeah. with revision. So, if I, I pe- people can't be that precious about their their poetics when yeah. they're working in television because there are a lot of people. You know, in this show. It was amazing. We got to keep 98% of what we wrote on the screen. Some shows, you know, all sorts of people get ideas along the way, you know, or the executive wants to take it in a different direction and you think it's completely wrong. Mm-hmm. But you're a professional and you're getting paid and you just do the best job Clock's you can. ticking. And you suck it up and, and get it done. You know, uh, so it made it a little easier, even on something we care about this much. And you say, God, I, I wish you would see why I don't like that, that moment in the scene. But you just, you know, you, 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 you live it. And sometimes, you know, you see it two years later and realize, well, maybe she was right on that one. You know, <laughs> don't say that out loud very often. No, we're, yeah, we, <laughs> she just pointed at the recording. recorder. Yes. She's yeah. like, I've got it on tape. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll yeah. email you that clip. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's just, she was Ooh. right. She was right. She was right. She was right. You can yeah, have my answer trim all, tone. Trim all the context. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your ringtone that says hysterical. Currently, it's X-Men the Animated Series, yeah. but I'll oh, use that one instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all yeah. right, well, I have a game I would <gasps> like to Previously uh, on X-Men. She was yeah. right. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's magic. Um, I he just got a, uh, I got, I got a little game I thought we could play before we wrap things up because we're about to wrap up. Um, but um, what I thought I would do is I will <laughs> read the, the uh, synopsis 
Uh-huh. Of something that you worked on. Oh, okay. my God in heaven. Okay. <laughs> and then you guys have to, uh, I'm not going to say which one of you worked on it, but I'm going to read the synopsis, and then you have to guess the name of the show that mm-hmm. it was that you worked on. Okay. Dog okay. City. Strawberry Shortcake. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. All right. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is, this is an actual show. Oh, I'm not going to say when it was from, but here we are. Here we go. Prince Lightstar. Skeleton Warriors. That was her. That was her. Maybe don't put the characters' names. All right, fine. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. Here, I'll try this one. This is. I won't say the character's name. I won't say the character. But I got one. I got one. Yeah, that's one point. That's one point. An evil scientist invents a device that emits a radiation that controls the minds of the people within its range. He gathers a sizable percentage of the Earth on his initial uh, on his initial attack, a- and a convention of uh, conventional uh, set of forces cannot counter attack, or they will come under the power of the zone if they enter. Oh, spiral zone. Oh, oh you see, yeah, okay. the, the word see, zone. Again with the name. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> Steven, By the way, uh, but, but, who who wrote that synopsis? Because that was like. <laughs> They need some writing help. You really right. should have done this before. Look, these are this, great. This is a this, great idea. This master of the universe <laughs> <laughs> holds okay, his we... sword up high. And... <laughs> Set in the beginning of the 22nd century. Okay. An interplanetary war. Exo Squad. What is it? Exo Squad. You are right. Wow. wow. You know your stuff. He got it off the century. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I love that. Um, how about uh, Mike? You wanna you wanna try it? Let's let me. <laughs> You're like, I'm gonna throw one at Mike. It. Okay, here we go. All right, poor guy. <clears throat> After being offline for five years, strawberry shortcake. Very <laughs> 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 oh, good. Absolutely, strawberry shortcake. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, serious. Can, now. I know you can All do right. this. After being offline for five years. This character is reactivated in 2030 to help a federal agency called Alpha Division fight uh, Alpha Division fight a high-tech terrorist organization Seashell. known as Dark, short for Directory for oh, Anarchy, Anarchy, Revenge, and Chaos. Chaos. Is this Darkwing Duck? Robocop Alpha Commando. Robocommando. How did I guess it was Robocop? I don't know. I'm not the same kind of nerd as Mike. (laughs) My next guess was going to be Phantom 2030 (laughs) because it took place in that year. Very good, though. Okay, okay. All right, here we go. Let's try try this. We're going to try this. Here we go. I'm very excited. Um, Now, uh, Matt, I know that you are... You, 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 this might be more up your alley. Okay. 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 Here we go. Here we go, folks. <laughs> Can put, put on your. With a knife. Okay, here we go. All right. Put on your favorite hat and join this character for more great storytelling. First, when a garden party at this character's house has to be postponed because of a downpour, a crazy situation. Is this Lidsville? <laughs> it is not. It's actually. Strawberry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, no, because are, I'm a redhead. That's you are why a redhead. I would know. That's, that's why. why. I, yes. I knew that you would be a fan. Yes. Um, all right. One last. My one. sister likes strawberry shortcake. I shortcake. I remember she had a bunch of the stuff. She's gonna be really mad. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't believe you didn't get that one. That <laughs> I made you watch it 175 times. Yeah. Okay. This. Okay. This is this. Here we go. Here okay. we go. Okay. <laughs> this one is insane. This character from a Disney animated movie joins a cast of fun characters in the 1930s in Pacific Islands as a bush pilot. Oh, is this uh, Tailspin? It is Tailspin. Woo! Very good. It's yeah. Baloo from Baloo. Yeah. Tailspin. I love Tailspin. That was a good show. Yep. I know. I yeah. love that that was the Because that's the one they were like, hey, they were like, yeah, let's let's do a spinoff of The Jungle Book where he's a pilot who has to ship cargo. And you're like, wait, <laughs> you're like, what? What is this? <laughs> what? How on earth what? did that become the plan? Like, like they're saying we're giving Baloo a job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and clothes? Because yeah. that what was, that's yeah. what was missing from The Jungle yeah. Book. Jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Cher Khan should be a tax attorney. Yeah. Perfect. Nailed it. 
<laughs> who came up with that? Who made that show? Is that your show? Who, uh, wrote on it. Did oh. not. Who yes, created that? Uh, T- Tad Stone. No, uh, um, no, he 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 was Darkwing Duck. Tad Stone was okay, Darkwing Duck. Was, was, was Megan on that? Uh, possibly. Um, yeah. There, I will say that there was. We met some of our best friends in the talent yeah. pool at Disney TV Animation. Yeah, just Alan the most Burnett. Ama- I mean, they, ah, cre- they uh, cranked out a bunch of great shows that I, I watched. You know, the Gummy Bears. I think it was guys, them too. Or Al- like, well, there's gargoyles and yeah, gummy bears they worked on gargoyles. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, guys. Have you seen that? That new figure from Gargoyle? <laughs> We've been seeing new figures from all kinds of things lately, and it's just been astonishing what's, yeah. what's coming yeah. out in the market yeah. these Stephen days. Stephen mentioned Alan Burnett. He, he and I... Wonderful guy. All, the first job I got, the first week I was working on GoBots, he was in... There's a little bitty building across from Hanna-Barbera called HB3, and because there was Ruby Spears and Hanna-Barbera, and that was 80% of Saturday morning, and... At HB3, there were like four people. There was Alan Burnett, Jeff Siegel, who was in charge of the GoBots, and Kelly Ward, who ran GoBots with Jeff. And so I met Alan the first week there. Then I moved to Disney. He moved to Disney. I moved to Fox with Beetlejuice and X-Men. He moved to to, so cool. to uh, Warner's and basically was Mr. Warner's creative supervisor. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't get the credit. He was never self-promoting, but... The question always came up at HB or wherever we were. If, say, if you had a show and it was your money, who would you entrust creatively to mm-hmm. the show? Yeah. And I always just, oh, it's Alan in, in a heartbeat. He was quietest, nicest, most easygoing. There'd be crazy executives <laughs> sc- pulling their hair out and saying, you know, the show's over, the show's over. And Alan would just walk them through it mm-hmm. and he'd handle it. And the same thing with Batman. The first. Because he was, he was uh, Batman. The first year Batman of was Batman of at Fox. They were they there was some angry fighting going on, and they got settled down. Alan came on not the first month, but within that, got it settled. And people, everybody knows Paul Dini and Bruce Tim because of yeah. their their talents. Of course, yeah. But my experience is is that the the continuing factor for the quality of the, of the shows at uh, WB was all Alan. Wow. Yeah. Well, look, uh, Julia and you know Eric, we could, I could, we could literally, I could sit with you guys. We could talk about <laughs> this stuff for you know hours and oh, hours. So we so should have fun. you back and do a panel at like Comic Con or at something. Yeah. We'll, we'll do something you should fun mention. together. That sounds the delightful. Yeah. If you're just del- yes, yes, yes. We're there. Yes. I mean, yes, what uh, we talked about it, and I will put this out in the air on the podcast. I think. We should do a screening at the Chinese theater where we show two episodes in a row. I know mm-hmm. that you had a two that you said were like a match mm-hmm. to to be playing, um, but we should we should show uh, two episodes of X Men the animated series do a on Q&A. the big screen. Do a Q and A and yeah, do a right. book signing as part of like a big thing. It would be so much yeah. fun. I love how you just. I'll just throw this out there. <laughs> we, yeah. we couldn't get Disney or Marvel on the phone <laughs> for <laughs> five years. Stephen, to to Stephen will get it done. Well, I'm that. sure that we can. We know people at TCL. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I mean, the theater is not a problem. No. The yeah. theater we can do as long as 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 the the ability to be able to show it yeah. is the is the issue. Yeah. yeah absolutely. But we can this, this sounds like fun. I know yeah. you guys are We're so there. great. We're there. Uh, thanks again Great. so much for doing this, uh, everyone. Uh, where where can people again? People can get the book at uh, Barnes and Noble and at all sorts of all pl- all sorts of places. Uh, but if you can't find it there, please head on to Amazon. They're having quite the sale of it these days. And yeah, that's and, and not on a bad previously thing. on X Men, if you get it directly from the publisher online from Jacob, Jacob. Brown, it'll be a signed copy. I sat down and wow. signed <laughs> signed four or five thousand for them and wore oh my, my hand God. out. <laughs> Amazing. Now, and if I can jump in here for for us. Yes. Uh, X Men T A S. That's us at X Men the Animated Series. Mm-hmm. I'm on Twitter way too much, just you know, <laughs> uh, beating the drum for X Men. Yeah. We also have an Instagram page. I'm trying to do better with. We have a Facebook page, and we have a website that's currently under revision, but mm-hmm. that'll be up also. X Men T A S. So please, awesome. you know, reach out to us. Find us. Find us. We try and communicate as best we can. We'll tag you in all the right. posts. Oh, thank you. Course, God, that'd be fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Mike Black. Where can people find you? I am at Mike Black is back on all social media. Mike Black is back? He yes. changed it a while ago. You yeah. did. Yeah. I did. It was Mike Black attack, and I was getting a lot of the wrong kind of mail. <laughs> 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 I was like, it just rhymed. That was the whole reason yeah. I was doing it. But uh, 
Yeah, a lot of terrible people were like, <laughs> I'd like to cut of your jib. And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh, like, no. Nope. Not, yep. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. So, oh, no. So Mike Black is back fit with coming out of pandemic and everything. Yeah, so yeah that's a wonderful thing. Like, yeah. uh, Matt Walker, where can people get ja? Uh Links to everything at funnymat.com, or if you're Elon Musk, you can leave a message for me at mattwalkersucks.com. <laughs> Which is a real website yep. where people really do leave hate mail for yep, Matt Walker. Yep, it's fine. <laughs> yes. You can always get me at Stephen Glickman, S T P H E. Glickman on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on TikTok. I'm Stephen K. Glickman. Uh, When's your album coming out? Album comes out uh, mid July. Very exciting. And the music about, video? Um, uh, music video, same day. Same day. It'll all, right. all drop the same day. So okay. We're very waiting. Exciting. I know. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and good your fudge f- cookies. When do those come out? <laughs> my, the Stephen Glickman fudge cookies, uh, August 1st. Uh, and do they all go immediately in your mouth? They, yes, yes. 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 Of okay, course. Okay. There's a catapult that shoots yes. them out of my face. <laughs> From I the will oven. eat all of them uh, while nice. I read this book, actually. Yes. So uh, thanks again, guys. Thanks for listening to the show. You guys are wonderful guests, and we look forward to doing cool things in the future. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all so much. Oh.